Salam everyone. In this video, I will talk about the whole body inflammatory response to cardiopulmonary bypass machine. I will start with neutrophil activation. As we know, when there is trauma or injury in our body, there will be complement activation and then there will be inflammatory response. After that, there will be neutrophil activation. The activation of neutrophil have few effects on the human body. The first one of them is that it increases vascular permeability. And that this increase in vascular permeability will increase in capillary and that will lead to volume overload and electrolyte imbalance. So in this part we are talking specifically during the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. What does the neutrophil do? Increase vascular permeability, increase capillary leak, volume overload and electrolyte imbalance. The other effect is that it liberates the oxygen drive free radical the harmful radicals. These radicals are the damaging effect of the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. And we have another response due of uh, neutrophil activation, which is aggregation and clustering of neutrophil cells to each other or to other cell types like the endothelium. And this activation and aggregation and clustering cause more inflammation and more immune response. Then we have platelet activation. After starting the circulation, there will be decrease in platelet count in the first two minutes by 80%, in the first eight minutes by 70%, and it stays close to that. The factors that will lead to this are the hemodilution, the cardiotomy sucker, and the oxygenators. And interestingly, membrane oxygenator will cause greater decrease in platelet count than bubble oxygenators. Then we have platelet activation. When platelet exposed to the subendothelial cells, they bind to von Willebrand factor through glycoprotein 1b, and that will cause release of the granules, thromboxin and ADP. After the release of these granules, the receptors glycoprotein 2b and 3a will be present on the platelet surface, and that will cause more aggregation of platelets and between the platelets the cascade the coagulation cascade will go on and there will be fibrin formation in cardiopulmonary bypass machine this process is whole affected these are that receptors are damaged and there will be no fibrin formation so that will cause the bleeding that's associated with this machine true membrane oxygenators when they are made from silicone are will cause less damage Okay. Then I will go to complement activation. When the blood is exposed to non-biological surfaces, with the help of factor 12 thrombin and plasmin, will cause complement system activation, where it is biphasic. So the second phase takes place 8 to 48 hours postoperatively, and we can reduce this effect by giving methylprednisolone and steroids. The factors that affect this complement activation are true membrane oxygenators are weaker than bubble oxygenator and the other one is that duration of the cardiopulmonary bypass machine and protamine administration. Then we have the calocrine bradykinin activation. Let's see how bradykinin is produced. The intrinsic pathway of coagulation cascade is stimulated with the effect of high molecular weight caninogene and subendothelial cells. This high molecular weight caninogene will activate factor 12 and factor 11 and the coagulation process will go on. The active factor 12 will have a positive feedback on precalocrine and it will produce calocrine. And this calocrine will help the conversion of high molecular weight to bradykinin. So now here we get the bradykinin. This bradykinin has many effects on our body when it is produced during the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. The first one is that it increases natriuresis and it causes bronchoconstriction. Another effect is that it increases vascular permeability and it also causes vasodilatation. Another effect of bradykinin is that it increases pain. When there is increase in vascular permeability, there is non-beating edema and when it is trauma, it will cause pus formation. The other one was increase in pain. 
when there is vasodilatation and increase in natriuresis, that will cause hypotension. That's why some of our patients after this machine operation will have hypotension. IN means protein, while kind means motion. The coagulation cascade. First, I will talk about it in general. What does it consist of and what is the end product? And then what happens during the cardiopulmonary bypass machine? The end product of this cascade is fibrin formation, which comes from fibrinogen with the help of thrombin. And thrombin comes from prothrombin. We have the intrinsic pathway, the extrinsic pathway, and the common pathway. The intrinsic pathway is activated by the presence of calocrine and contact activation. And the active form of factor 12, 11, and 9 will be formed. The common pathway we have factor 10, which changed to the active form with the help of factor 8 and 9 and 7. We have the extrinsic pathway, which is stimulated by tissue factors, and this pathway we have factor 7 only. When the active factor 10 is formed and factor 5, that will change prothrombin to thrombin, and then thrombin will transform fibrinogen to fibrin. So fibrin is the end product of the coagulation cascade. This fibrin needs to be in its stable form, and this happens with the help of calcium and factor 13. During the cardiopulmonary bypass machine, the fibrin formation is inhibited by administration of heparin. So there will be prevention of fibrin formation, but this process is not completely inhibited, so some fibrin will be formed. Then we have the fibrinolytic cascade for which we have the pri primary, which is the physiological, and we have secondary, which is the pathological or pharmacological. For fibrinolytic cascade, um, the fibrin will be inhibited and will be transformed to its degradation product with the help of plasmin. But where does this plasmin comes from? The plasmin comes from the extrinsic plasminogen, which is, pres which is present inside the endothelial cells. And these endothelial cells, with the help of factor 12, 11, and calocrine, will produce plasmin. These endothelial cells behave in this way because of the high levels of bradykinin and catecholamine and other products. So the plasminogen will change to plasmin. When the plasmin is formed, the fibrinolytic cascade starts. So fibrin will change to its degradation product and fibrinogen will change with the help of plasmin to its degradation product. In almost all cases of cardiac operation, when we use the cardiopulmonary bypass machine, there is fibrinolytic cascade to have an important role in the process of bleeding that's present after the operation. And there is hyperfibrinolysis in about 20% of cases of cardiac operations. I hope that this video was useful and it is produced by a heart surgeon.